Wow. I think Frank Muller's onto something. Hi everyone and welcome to Saluso and yes today we are talking about a brand new Frank Muller. We don't normally talk about these on the channel and you don't see too much information about the brand anymore on the internet. But in December of 2020 they came out with a new watch called the Frank Muller Vanguard Line Cut and cautiously I'm saying I think Frank Muller may be onto something. I think they may actually be making a proper comeback. As a brand that was really, really popular in the 90s and the early 2000s, they did sort of fall off in the last decade or so, falling out to brands like Hublot and Richard Mille, which sort of took their place as the go-to tunnel-shaped watch. So Frank Miller for a long time, in my view, has been trying to sort of reinvent itself and recapture some of the magic that they had for so long. And while, yes, they are still the ones who should be credited for popularizing the tonneau shape, bringing it back from the early days of watchmaking in the 1900s, let's face it, when people think tonneau shape watches, they think Richard Mille. Hublot even tried to get in on the action with the spirit of Big Bang. But at the end of the day, Frank Miller can't really let go of it, so instead what they've done is they've come back strong and they've shed a lot of the weight that a lot of their watches have had. Over the past few years, their watches have gotten bigger, their watches have gotten thicker. This is back to the basics. It's back to what Frank Miller used to be doing back in the 90s. They're making watches that are elegant as well as interesting and standing out from the crowd. And with this, I think they're really onto something. It's a fully sandblasted titanium watch with a full bracelet. Again, something not usually seen on a Frank Miller. But more importantly, this is only a 41 millimeter watch that's only nine millimeters thick. Now bear in mind that's including the fact that this is still a curved case with curved glass, things that are very difficult to achieve and difficult to make thin. So Frank Miller is really re-upping on their actual capacity, showing that they're more than just visual design, they're actually engineering to make this. And more importantly, they're making it a much more accessible size. While their Vanguard line has been successful for them, at the end of the day, they're big watches. Not everyone has the wrists to wear something like that. And not everyone wants something that you can't hide under at least a jacket cuff. So I think that Frank Miller, by doing this, they've really gone back to the basics in terms of making a watch that's usable, that's light. And very importantly, this watch has an in-house movement. They don't really put too many specifics on it. But if you look around for a couple of articles, you can get the dimensions of it. And that does tell you that it's not an ETA 2892, which is what you might suspect. And it's not a Salida either. Because if you look at the dimensions of the movement, the FM708 is 28.9 millimeters in diameter by 3.8 millimeters thick versus the ETA2892 and its Salida SW300 equivalent measuring 25.6 millimeters by 3.6 millimeters thick. So this movement is bigger than both of those. And I think that's a crucial indicator that it is a different movement and hopefully a proper in-house movement. Unfortunately, Frank Miller isn't always very forthcoming with its movements. So you have to do a bit of digging, but the numbers are extremely promising. And if it's the case, I think this is a great, great step forward towards making a new reputation and a new impression of Frank Miller, one that is indeed a proper 21st century in-house manufacturer across the board. When I did my video last year talking about why Frank Miller is so expensive, one of the criticisms that I think the community has in general for it is that they call themselves master of complications, but a lot of their entry level watches were still outsourced. And while that would have been perfectly fine in the 2000s, in this market, paying over 10 grand for a watch that doesn't even have an in-house movement or at least a high-end outsourced one from something like JLC or Vaucher Fleurier or something like an FPA perhaps, it's a very tough sell. So I think Frank Miller has done a great job in dispelling that in creating this watch that really seems to check all of the boxes for the watch collector that perhaps likes the design of Frank Miller, but felt a little bit uh, about sort of the movement side of things. And of course, being an automatic Frank Miller watch, it should also still come with a platinum rotor. So that's another feather in its cap as well. Now, in terms of pricing and availability, the line cut is limited to France only. It's a boutique only edition, but hopefully this will spawn a newer collection. 
but as it currently stands, you can only get this in France and you're gonna have to pay 9,800 euros for it. So that's about 12,000 US, give or take the exchange rate. And what does this really compete with? Well, in my view, the closest competitor it has is something like the Hublot Classic Fusion with a full titanium bracelet. While they don't look the same visually, I do believe they serve the same sort of purposes, serve a sporty but still elegant watch and Hublot and Frank Muller are generally cross-shopped more than other brands. So measuring it up against the Hublot, well, the Hublot is an $8,300 watch, so it's a fair bit cheaper, but it also uses a Salida SW300. It's also, by and large, much easier to find a Hublot Classic Fusion than you would a Vanguard, especially considering that this is a France-only edition. So those sorts of things do come into play. Unfortunately, because this is a new collection or a new version of the collection, there's not really much indication on pre-owned value, but definitely that exclusivity is gonna be with the Frank Muller. And then looking on the upper end, well, yeah, you could kind of cross shop this with a Richard Mille, but then again, you kind of can't because a titanium bracelet from Richard Mille costs 65,000 US for an RM11. And if you want that with the watch, you're looking at 180,000 US. And that's before we start talking about the fact that it's pretty difficult to get most Richard Mills at retail. So I think this is a great opportunity for Frank Miller to really capture a segment that isn't that crowded in the grand scheme of things with a shape that is distinctive, that is emblematic of Frank Miller. And more importantly, I think this does put a bit more pressure on Hublot to put an in-house movement into the classic fusion. I'd be interested to see if they do that in the near future, just considering the age of the collection and they've just celebrated their 40th year anniversary with the Salida version. So I think there must be an in-house version, at least on the horizon. But in any case, I'd love to know what your opinions are on the Frank Miller Vanguard line cut. Do you think Frank Miller has a chance of coming back? Do you think that this is the watch that can help them do it? Or do you think they should just go back to what they were doing already with the Vanguards? I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. And of course, if you like this video, make sure you like it and share it. If you want to see more pictures of this, as well as all the infographics I use throughout my videos, then make sure you follow me on Instagram at Shaluso. And if you want to keep seeing more watch videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell as well so you know when the next video comes out. In any case, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you on the next one.